I now call upon Professor Jonathan Kidd, Dean of the University of London International Programmes, to conclude. Good afternoon. Members of the Board of Trustees of the University, Vice-Chancellor, graduates and guests, colleagues from the colleges and colleagues from the University of London International Academy. In concluding this ceremony, let me, as Dean of the University of London International Programmes, add my welcome to you. As the Vice-Chancellor remarked as he opened this ceremony, what we find so inspiring and gratifying about this occasion is the way in which it brings people together from diverse backgrounds across the world, united by this connection to the University of London. And I know that the staff working with the University of London International Programmes derive much personal satisfaction from meeting today with people whom we first encountered as students in different parts of the world as we've traveled around. So I'd like to thank you all for your presence today, for your support for the University of London International Programmes. Now the main reason for us being here this afternoon is to recognize the achievements of our graduates. But from my perspective as Dean, this is also uh, an occasion to affirm the value of the work which is done by the academic and managerial staff who support the University of London International Programmes. And so on my own behalf, and I'm sure on behalf of the graduates here today and their families, I want to thank those who work to support our academic programmes. And I'd like to split my thank yous into a number of separate groups. First of all, uh, these people don't get widely recognized, but they're absolutely essential to the workings of the system. I want to recognize the examiners. These come mainly from within the university and some from without, and their job is to assure the high standards of the University of London. Theirs is often a pressured job. They've got many scripts to read and to assess under often very demanding time constraints. And of necessity, examiners have to remain in the background, anonymous if you like. In the last year, this silent army numbered 1,051 people, all of them high-level experts in their subjects. So graduates, I would like you to thank the examiners. These are the people who determined that you had reached the demanding standard required for a University of London award. So I'll, I'm sure you'll want to join me in thanking them. <laughs> Second, a, a group that overlaps in personnel with the first, colleagues from the colleges of the university who prepare the curriculum, create materials to support students' learning, liaise with students, liaise with and work with independent teaching institutions, either as they travel um, by email um, and sometimes through um, social networking sites of various sorts. Some of these colleagues up on the stage behind me and others who haven't been able to come today have a really punishing international travel schedule. Remember, as the Chancellor said this morning, some of us were there this morning as well, we have students in over 180 countries in the world. And some of these colleagues that are on the road visiting them live rather too much in airports. Not something I think most of you uh, wouldn't like to do. Thirdly, there are the independent teaching institutions from around the world to which our Vice-Chancellor has already paid tribute. I want to second the comments that he's made. For many of our graduates, these organizations have been an essential support. These independent institutions comprise a highly varied group, but in common, they have the feature, I think, that they're led by people of vision and drive. Educational entrepreneurs, a subcategory of social entrepreneurs, if you will. Quite a number of these institutions are represented here today and will be participating in the post-graduation workshop at Cumberland Lodge in Windsor Great Park. So representatives of institutions here today, as well as those, and I look into the sky as I say this, who are going to be viewing this from a webcast, 
i want you to know that we respect and value what you do for students of the university of london international programs fourth i want to thank my colleagues in the international academy of course i'm biased but i think the service they provide gets better and better in recent years with a constant headcount they succeeded not only at improving ongoing administration but also in meeting the challenges um, provided by a rapidly growing student body. And they're doing this all against a background in which students, and especially younger students, expect instant online services. Once you provide people with online services, they're not interested in waiting 48 hours for a response. They expect it to be uh, as instant as possible. The Vice-Chancellor mentioned the huge IT investment at the heart of the Business Transformation Programme. And as he said, I'll put it in somewhat different language, we think we're close to declaring victory on this within time and within budget. And of course, development of these systems will not stop at this point. This is simply a platform uh, for further development of our IT infrastructure to provide better services than you've received uh, for future cohorts of students. To single out one further aspect of the work of University of London international programmes, everywhere in the world, governments in general and the public are concerned to maintain and raise the quality of provision of higher education. Thus, the assurance of quality is rising up the agenda everywhere. And so for a programme operating in so many countries of the world, we have a growing task and one which so far I think we're performing more than satisfactorily. But I want to emphasise that this is a growing and expanding task. Nearly finally in my list of thanks, let me gaze up at the superstructure of international programmes. In other words, the hierarchy of this large and distinguished university. At the very top, we have the members of the Board of Trustees. They rarely get much thanks in public forums such as this. So let me assure our trustees that the time they put in to give us advice and direction is of critical importance and much appreciated. And the same comments goes for those colleagues, both from within and without the university, who serve in our governance committees. We've got a wide range of committees dealing with different topics, many unsung heroes in those, and again, I want from this uh, podium now to, to thank them. So to conclude my list of thank yous, I come to our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Geoffrey Crossick. Last September, Jeff announced that he would step down in the summer of 2002. As Jeff has more than four months to serve, it's premature to say goodbye, so I won't. But this is the last time Jeff will officiate at a London graduation. So it would be remiss of me not to notice this. As you can sense from Jeff's speech this morning and this afternoon, his commitment to and enthusiasm for the University of London International Programmes is real and intense. As Vice-Chancellor, Jeff has kept himself very well informed about international programmes, and he's managed to do this without making either myself or my colleague, the Chief Operating Officer, Andrew Bollington, feel in any way micromanaged. It's, it's a delicate balance. So he's led us forward with what is often called a deft touch. And if you unpack that for a moment, expand on that phrase, I think it means he's proved both skillful and nimble and has drawn on his wealth of experience in, in managing academic organisations. So speaking personally, and I'm sure on behalf of university colleagues, I thank you, Jeff, for your leadership. Yes, your time with us has been short, but during this time, you've made an appreciable impact. Let me now turn from thanks to congratulations. And of course, the central purpose of this ceremony has been to acknowledge the achievement of you, the graduates, today. It's also to signify 
our thanks and particularly your thanks to family and friends who have supported you emotionally and financially during your studies. So to you graduates, to your family, to your friends, on behalf of the staff of the University of London programmes, I say to you, very well done. You've achieved an award. You've achieved an award that has been assessed to the high standard of one of the world's leading universities. So you've every reason to go out of this hall today with a proud smile on your face. The Vice-Chancellor, in his opening remarks, mentioned that we value a lifelong relationship with you. And he quoted Statute 4.1, which I will not re-quote, but it is, perhaps I will re-quote it, it's so important. The members of the university, members, shall be the Chancellor, the members of the Board of Trustees, all staff employed by the university and its colleges, all students and graduates and emeritus professors and readers of the university and its colleges. Remember that, graduates. So graduates, you're now members of the university for life, in fact. So let me welcome you into this membership and invite you in to enjoy this fellowship by being active in the Alumni Association. We know how useful it is in building contacts and it's particularly interesting in such an international program. We're in 180 countries of the world. I can tell you, graduates, as you move around the world in your careers and perhaps to some extent in your social life, there will be no country in the world where you will not find fellow alumni of the University of London. People who have an experience in common with you and therefore, when you're meeting with them initially often through electronic media, are likely to want to meet with you to share experiences and maybe to do other uh, useful activities together. So, finally, to underline another theme of the Vice-Chancellor's opening address, I encourage you all in your lives ahead, your professional lives, to recognize and act on the moral responsibilities of those educated at a university in a world where the great majority of people haven't. And that responsibility is above all to ensure that you use your knowledge, your understanding, and your capacity for critical analysis, not only to enhance your own careers, but to make the world uh, a more interesting and more exciting and fundamentally a better place. So my concluding remarks to you are, from now on, you and the university are linked for life through the membership provided for in the statutes of the university. We relish your success today, and as you hear, because we boast about our Nobel Prize winners, and there are many other people who've done enormously well having studied with international programs, we relish your future success. We want to know about it. We want to live in uh, the reflected glory of your future success. So from your perspective, to the extent that the university continues to be successful in all of its endeavors, this reflects well on you as graduates. So we've got a partnership. You do well, we do well. And those are my final words, except to congratulate you again, and thank you for coming all the way to London, those who travelled such an enormous distance. Thank you.